Next, let's look at subtraction. We're going we're gonna to keep it um, like fractions as well. So these are the, uh, the easiest um, end of the topic that we have with addition and subtraction. So we're still going to subtract like fractions. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to keep the denominators the same. We're going to subtract the numerator. So number A, 21 over 45 minus 17 over 45 common denominators so simply subtract 21 minus 17 will give you 4 divided by 45 4 and 45 nothing common between 4 and 45 so the final answer is 4 over 45 Number B, 3 and 5 over 6 minus 2 and 4 over 6 again, same denominators. We're going to do the same thing as we did with the mixed numbers when we added them, but this time we're going to subtract 3 minus 2. We're going to subtract the whole numbers is 1. 5 minus 4 is also 1, and then we keep the 6. 1 and 6, nothing common, so the answer is 1 and 1, 6. The last one has a star, and that star means that this question is a special kind of question. Some subtraction problems, you may have to use the method of borrowing. And we know that we have to borrow when we have the same denominators the same. We have a mixed number in the minuend, and also we notice that the numerator on the first one is less than the numerator on the second one. One minus four, we cannot do that. So we have to borrow. We have to borrow a one whole from the six, give it to that fraction part, and then try again to subtract. So we would overcome the fact that the first number is smaller than the second number. The way we're going to borrow is we have to take a 1 out of the 6. The 6 will go down to a 5. And then the fraction part for that first mixed number will consist of two fractions. The one I borrowed, I can rewrite it as 10 over 10, which is a 1. And then plus the original fraction, 1 over 10. These two fractions is the fraction part of the, of the mixed number. Minus, we still have to subtract minus 3 and 4 over 10. Let's combine the two fractions here and rewrite our problem as 5 and then 10 plus 1. It's an addition, same denominator, follow the rules for addition. 10 plus 1 is 11 over 10. And we still have to subtract 3 and 4 over 10. Now look at the problem. 11 minus 4, yes, we can do it. We have common denominators. So all we have to do is to apply the same rules we did with number B. 11 minus 4 will give you 7. 5 minus 3, of course, is going to give you the... 11 minus 3, I'm sorry, it's going to give you the 2 and then over 10. So the answer is 2 and 7 over 10. Nothing comes between 7 and 10. It's, an, it's a proper fraction. Then that is it with the subtraction. Any questions? Anything that was not clear on the borrowing method? Okay, Marlene is asking a good question. How did you come with a 10 over 10? Should it be 11? after borrowing from six. Well, Marlene, we did borrow one whole from the six. I can represent the one whole as 100 over 100, 200 over 200, two over two, three over three, five over five. Why did I specifically chose 10? Because look at the denominators, 10. Why would I make my life harder and make it 5 over 5? And then I know I have to add that to 1 over 10, different denominators, find a common denominator, and then add. I can just pick it to be 10 over 10. So it is consistent with my denominator. So when I add 10 over 10 to 1 over 10, that is easy for me. That's why I specifically did it as 10 over 10. So the 10 over 10 is the whole 1. 
that I borrowed from the six. I added that to the fraction part already there in the problem. And that together made the 11 over 10 fraction part of the first mixed number. Did I, ask your, did, did I answer your question, Marlene? Okay, let's move on to a self-check question. 10 and 3 over 5 minus 2 and 4 over 5. Look at the numerators. Do you see a problem? Do we have to borrow? Or it's just a simple subtraction problem. What do you think? Again, write down the problem on a piece of paper. When you rewrite the problem, that's what I find. I understand more about the problem. When I write the problem, I realize I have common denominators. When I write the problem, I realize I have the first numerator smaller than the second numerator. So that would make me think about doing what? Should I borrow or no? Okay, so think about the borrowing. If you said, yes, I'm going to borrow, you're going to borrow one from the 10. The 10 becomes what? And to make it easy for you, you're going to represent the 10, the one that you borrowed in terms of what over what, since you have a 5 in both denominators. What do you think? Okay, let's do the question together. So again, I'm going to decide to borrow. Just because 3 is smaller than 4, 3 minus 4, I cannot do anything about that, so borrow. So when we borrow, we will have to make the 10 9. That 1 borrowed from the 10, I'm going to represent in terms of 5 over 5, just because I have the denominators as 5, so just to make my life easy, plus the original fraction, 3 over 5, and that is all the fraction part of the first mixed number. I still have to subtract minus 2, 4 over 5. Combine the two fractions for the 9, 9 and 3, 3 plus 3, uh, sorry, 5 plus 3 will give you 8 on the top, 5 will stay, these are the addition rules, and then minus 2 and 4 over 5. I did overcome the problem I had, so then now the first numerator is greater than the second. Now I'm, I'm able to do the subtraction, 9 minus 2 will give you 7. 8 minus 4 will give you 4, and 5 will stay because it's the common denominator. 4 and 5, nothing common. It's, an, it's a proper fraction, so that is it for the answer. So answer number C is the correct answer. Let's go ahead and do another question with subtraction. 5 and 7 over 10 minus 2 and 3 over 10. Borrow or no borrow? What do you think? Look at the numerators. 7 minus 3. Doable or, or no? What do you think? Is it a simple subtraction problem or you have to borrow? Let's do the question together and see what the answer would be for this subtraction problem. Again, common denominators, that's good. I have 7 minus 3. Yes, we can do that. So this is a simple subtraction. No borrowing is needed. So I just can go, can go with the easy way, no borrowing. So 5 minus 2 is 3. 7 minus 3 will give you the 4. And then 10 will stay. 4 and 10, two even numbers, the common factor between 4 and 10 would, would have to be what? 2. So divide over 2, top and bottom, to simplify the fraction part, do not divide 3 over 2. So it will be 3 and then 2 over 5. 3 and 2 fifths is the difference between these two mixed numbers. So the answer is B.